back from the overseas trip. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Uh, guys, I just wanted you to turn around, say, go and hug somebody, say hi, say that you're an absolute blessing. You may take a seat. <laughs> Welcome, family, to Sunday service. It's good to have you. Do we have any first time visitors in the house? Can you just raise up your hand, first time visitors? Anybody this morning? No first time visitors? All right, okay. We have some birthdays this morning, family, and we have a lot of birthdays. So this, today, we actually have Ben's birthday. It's his birthday, as well as Chantal Kepi up in George. It's her birthday today, the 29th of September. And then we have Dada Rai's birthday on the 1st of October, Tuesday. Dada, don't see Dada Rai this morning. And then we have Tyler's birthday on the 2nd of October, and Tyler's also not here. He's away still. And then we have three people's birthdays. We have Courtney's birthday on the 4th. We have Joyce's birthday on the 4th, as well as Sherilyn Trollope's birthday on the 4th. You can stand up, Joyce. Is there anybody else that's having a birthday that we didn't mention? Right, and we have no anniversaries. Can you believe it? No one got married this week. <laughs> Maybe I should make that happen. <laughs> All right, family, let's just stretch out our hands and let's pray for them. Oh, Heavenly Father, what a joy it is to come to you as family of God and just celebrate one another's birthday, Father. We just thank you, Father, for the gift of life, for what you're doing in each and every person's birthday, Father. 
What a joy it is, Father, to celebrate with them, Father, for what you are doing in their lives, oh God. For the new seasons that you're taking them through, the new things that that's happening in their lives, oh God. The things that they are desiring for that's coming to manifestation, Father, in this new season, Father. This new year that they are entering to. And however old or young they are, oh God, may they just be so significant to the plans that you have for them, oh God. May they just see you in everything, be it everything in everything that they do, oh God, in this season, oh God. And we just thank you, Father, for who they are, the the value that they add into this church, Father, that they belong, oh God, and that the the value that they add in the community, oh Father, that they're going out and doing your will, Father, and being obedient to act on that, oh God. So, Father, I thank you for their life. I thank you for open doors for some, Father, that are opening for them, Father, and that the things that they are desiring for so long is beginning to open, Father. They don't have to kick those doors, that you are opening them up, Father. And Father, we can't wait to hear the testimonies of what you're doing in through their lives. So Father, I thank you that you're taking them deeper, to deep and to deep, into deeper worlds, from glory to glory, from strength to strength, oh God, and that you're doing a new thing in their lives. So Father, we just praise you and we honor you and we just thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, and just some announcements. Again, oh, there will be no Sunday evening special tonight. Oh, I know. But we'll resume very soon. And another R for the parents. I know it's long, but no true kids today, guys. We will resume true kids back on the 13th of October. Oh, I know. Next week Sunday is Family Sunday, so the kids will be in the service. So hang in there, parents. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! Hang in there, parents. We've got you. But our teachers need a well-deserved break, and they two kids will resume on the 13th of October again. And then there will be also on the 13th of October, there will be a baptism service. Um, So if you would like to be baptized, please do put your name down in the welcome center. There's a list there. Just put your name down and your contact details and we'll get in touch with you with that. And then again, family, um, I know we've announced it previously, but we uh, are still collecting um, food items for the pantry as well. So please do, um, if you have anything in your homes or want to donate, Monday to Friday at the church office or on a Sunday, just give us non-perishable food items. We are still collecting. Um, We've managed to give five food parcels already to the families in the church that are in need and really do need it. So do carry on. um, Keep Keep carrying on, keep giving, and we do need that. And if you would like to give money, you can EFT it into the bank account, the church bank account, and just as long as you reference it, pantries that we know where it needs to be allocated to. All right, family, that's all the announcements. Let's look to the digital announcements for our weekly programs and then for what's happening on the 13th. Enjoy the service, family. Hey, family. Thank you for paying attention to our forthcoming attractions. Worship dance practice happens every Monday at 5 p.m. Tuesdays are for prayer. This year, we are pursuing the prophetic word to become a house of prayer for all nations. So join us this Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. for an hour of prayer. Wednesdays are for life groups. If you are not already in a life group, we encourage you to visit one this week you can get a list of all the available life groups from our Welcome Center in the foyer. Thursdays are for worship and media rehearsals. If you are musical, there is a special spot for you in our worship team. And for those of you who are fascinated by all things media, you can tag along on Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. Fridays at 4 p.m., we now have a kids' worship dance school. If you would like your kids to learn how to dance for the Lord, please send them to us on Friday at 4 p.m. Friday nights are for the youth. If you're a teenager, believe me, you don't want to miss Chico this Friday at 6.30 p.m. Saturdays, you can do whatever you want to do, unless, of course, there's a special meeting here at the church. Which brings me back to this service. If you came with your little ones, We have a safe and fun children's ministry available for kids under the age of 12. Let me also take this time to remind you that before the service starts, 
we have a pre-service prayer meeting at 8 a.m. in the conference center. This is your opportunity to pray for the Spirit of God to move significantly within the service. And finally, Sunday evenings are for specials. Every month, we introduce a brand new topic that is designed to help you navigate the challenges of following Jesus in today's world. If you would like to find out more, join us tonight at 5 p.m. for our Sunday evening special. Well, that's all I have for you today, family. Enjoy the rest of the service. Yeah, I know. I know, and I, I, I'm re I know, I'm trying to get all of these things ticked off of my to-do list before we leave for our trip. And I'm like, so much, I've got to wash my car, I've got to get an outfit, change the time. There is so much I have to get done, and I wish I had all these people's numbers, or at least I had a lead of where I could start looking to find people who can help me with all of this. Okay, cool. I'll call you back later. Bye. Where do I even start? Hey, is there anything you can? Not really. Not really. I have so much to get done. We have our anniversary trip coming up this weekend, so it's pretty exciting. But before we go, I've got so much to get done. I need to get an outfit. I wish I knew someone who could sew. I have to get my hair done. I need to get my nails done. I need to get our car washed because my car is filthy at the moment. And I mean, like, look at my to-do list. I've got to book a massage because I need to actually, you know, make this anniversary a little bit special. And here I am thinking, okay, I've got some of these things, you know, I've got a plan for them. And Tati comes to me saying, first of all, she slapped her shoes. I didn't get that fixed. And she's looking for a pet. She's asking me for a dog these days and asking me for a bird. So what I'm really feeling is like this to-do list needs to be completed. And I wish I knew someone who could help me or one way to get all of these people under one roof, or one solution. You know what? I have the perfect solution for you. Address is having a market day on the 13th of October, straight after church. Oh, what's happening? So they'll be all these entrepreneurs showcasing their services. All in one room, straight after church, you'll be able to have someone to wash your car, do a dress for you, do your nail. Ah, oh, hey. That sounds amazing. Everyone under one roof, 13th of October, straight after the service. Mm -hmm. I'll catch you there. Definitely. Yes, you heard right, church. On the 13th of October, straight after the service, we'll be having our Word of Truth Market Day. A fantastic opportunity for us to fundraise towards our life-changing legacy conference. This will be an opportunity for all of our entrepreneurs, artisans, and business owners to showcase all of their skills for us to see. How incredible! A chance to get all of your potential needs met under one roof. Burovos rolls, cake and cupcakes will be on sale, as well as the launch of our very first ever Word of Truth Bible Trivia Competition, where you can purchase a ticket to enter and stand a chance to win awesome prizes. This promises to be a fun-filled family day with the chance of inching us closer and closer to raising all the money that we need for conference. So come ready to sow seeds of great and small while we enjoy wonderful fellowship together. And that's the 13th of October, 2024, straight after the service. Bring a friend along. See you there. All right, church, this sounds exciting. So I hope you've marked your calendars for the 13th of October. We want to make this special. Please do not be in a rush. We're going to have the police standing at the gate. <laughs> no one is allowed to leave the premises until you've been part of the market day. And we just want to say if you're an entrepreneur, if you want to showcase your services on market day, please speak to Messi. Speak to Anel. I know Bessie is not here. Where's Anel? Anel, where are you? Delightful person. There is Anel over there. So you can speak to Anel and give her your details so that you can also be part of the people that are going to be showcasing their, uh, their services. And we've got Bible trivia people. I am taking you guys on. I got excited when I saw that. I saw one to <laughs> enter, but my husband said it's not fair. 
They said it's not fair. I'm not allowed to enter Bible trivia. <laughs> Gotta give everybody a chance. Okay. <laughs> so I hope you're excited, guys. This is really exciting. Pastor Justin, are you also going to be showcasing what you do on Market Day? I'm excited. I want to take you on on the Bible trivia. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Good morning, church. So good to be in the house of the Lord. We are super excited about what God is doing in and through the house. Um, this is just a fun time for us to come together as family. So please uh, make an effort to stay and to hang around, to just make it happen. Let's do life. Let's connect with one another and all the while raising funds for conference. Uh, talking of which... If you can just put the conference figures up, we just really want a quick update. We are nearly the church. We have raised 80,000 and we are only left with 21,000. And God has been good. Really, God has been so amazing. And every week, it's just, we, we're looking at the figures and it's just going, we, we're nearly there. We've got a month to conference, I think, to date is almost like just less than a month. No, no, it's, it's, it's less than a yeah, month. just less than a month yeah. to conference. But uh, we've got no doubt that God will provide for the conference so that it will always be free, as we have always said. So uh, even with market day around the corner, we just believe in that God is going to do amazing things. Uh, I think, I just wonder, uh, I've been saying, I know some of you have seen it, some of you not, but maybe it's still there. Please, please put one of the speakers on. Maybe. Legacy Conference 2024. My name is Paul Dennison and I've been invited again to be one of your keynote speakers. I'm really looking forward to coming down and being with you on the last weekend of October. This is an opportunity for you to set some time aside to encounter God and encounter other people. The theme this year is the shout. And I know a shout in a soccer stadium or a rugby stadium is just a shout. But a shout that is in line with the will of God and cause the walls of Jericho to come down. I'm going to ask you on the 25th to the 27th of October to be there, to be present, to be open to what God wants to do in your life and in the community of Port Alfred. See you there. Amen. Are you ready for the shout? We are going to release a shout that is going to bring walls down, that we really trust in that it's not an empty shout, like we're not just shouting for sport or for whatever else you shout for, we're shouting for the king. And we really trust in that there's going to be a significant shift in our community. Amen. Amen. And yeah, our speakers are excited. Paul is excited. Um, and next week we'll show you another one. Uh, but we really are excited because conference is around the corner. All righty. Amen. All right. And so, as you know, we started a new series called, called The Go, On The Go, and we've been trying to mobilize us as the Church of Jesus Christ to align to the great commission that he gave us, right? Yeah. That we need to go and make disciples of all nations. And often at time, we think going is very difficult. We complicate it, and we want to have programs in place, and we want to have armies in place. And this morning, as I was thinking about this, I thought of Gideon. Gideon, when God called him to represent him and lead the armies of Israel, thought that he needed thousands to go against the Midianites. And and then God just shocked him and said, no, I only want 300 men. And that was a small number compared to the people that were coming against them. But why did God do that? Because God wanted Gideon and Israel to know that it was his doing, not their doing. So many a time when God says go, we often look at the millions or billions of people that need to get saved, and then we think this is insurmountable. We need to get an army. We need to get lots of people mobilized so that we can all go. But sometimes what God is just asking you to do is just one person going out that you being obedient and going does not always have to be a program. It's just you looking around you and asking God, where can I go and who can I minister to? So in light with going, we've been going, okay? So myself and Tenille, 
And Lindy, we've been going to Nomzamo High School. We've been going to pray there because they've been in need of prayer. There are many people who need prayer. And so whilst we've been praying, we noticed that there were some needs that needed to be met. Uh, some cleaning needed to be done, which was not happening in time. So we decided to go and clean as a prophetic declaration that as we are praying, we are cleaning things up in the spirit realm, and we are going to manifest it in the physical by getting rid of the filth that we can get rid of, to say this is what God is doing, is ushering in a new day. So I sent word out. I'm like, people, anyone who's available, let's go. So normally when you say things like that, people are like, oh, no, let's do it during the weekend when we are not working. But sometimes that is not possible. So I got some people ready. So it was myself, Tanil, it was Torah, it was Karen, it was Renee, and it was Daphne, who's 89 years old, who came out to mop floors, to clean. I mean, our bodies were sore. We had blisters on our hands, but we were glad to do it. So I just want to encourage us that going does not necessarily mean getting a missions team ready and getting a camping gear and all those things to go out. Sometimes it's just looking around you. We've got so many schools in our community. We've got so many people in our community that are in need of the love of Jesus Christ. And all you need to do is just go with you. The Jesus in you is more than enough for you to go. So this morning, we've got some people that want to testify on how they've been going out and doing that which God is saying we need to do as a church. So I'm going to ask Pastor Dave, please come. I, th I think he's testifying about oh, healing. He, oh, he's testifying about healing. All right. Charlie, you Charlie want to talk about... Charlie. Come, come talk about your going after the service. Come, Charlie. Just being obedient. You know, sometimes when you hear a message, you think like, ah, oh, well, it's just a message. But there are some people that listen to the message, take it to heart, and then they actually go and do something. Thank you, Justin. You know, it's easy just to sit there and listen. But it's more difficult to act. But you know, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Once you go out, I was sitting there and I'm thinking, when last have I really done something for the Lord? And I was challenged that morning, and as I am now, I wasn't prepared to talk now. <laughs> but uh, when I left here, I knew that there was a there's a neighbor that I've got that had a tremendous back problem. And uh, when I went home, I said to Corey, I'm just going to go. And, and I phoned my neighbor, and I said, do you mind if I come and uh, see you? And oh, he was still in bed anyway. I went across and went and chatted to him. And he'd been to, he had a back problem and been to a chiropractor. And I said, you know, uh, I've got a different chiropractor. One that doesn't even touch your body physically. And I want to pray for you. So uh, he, he is a man of God and he did go and he sat down. And his daughter, which is... Uh, I was also there. She's from uh, uh, another school in Port Elizabeth. And uh, I prayed for him. And without touching him, he got up, he went down on the ground and he got up and he said, the pain is there, but it's not the same as it was. I said, you know, we always want God to heal us right away. But it takes time. And... Uh, I just know that I followed up a few days later, and uh, I'm not going to give you his name. God's got his name. And God will look after him and heal him in his time. But the main thing is, I was actually healed more than what he was. So we give God all the glory just by being a little bit obedient. Praise God. Thank you, Charlie. Just being obedient and going. So you just have to go. A whole lot of what God is going to do will be activated when you go. So that's what we're talking about, Pastor Dave. Look, I don't want to draw any attention to myself. What I want to share is about my Lord Jesus Christ. I want to reflect him to you this morning. And sorry, I've... I've got to sit down for a bit. I'm a bit dizzy. Okay. Last week, 
on Thursday, I started wean blood. By Friday, the, the fountain hadn't stopped. <laughs> and I went and got a, uh, I found a two liter bottle and within a half an hour, I just about filled that two liter bottle up with urine. On Saturday, well, let just, I should go back to, to Friday. On Friday evening, I stopped taking my blood thinning tablets because I thought, hey, I've reached a, reached a limit with these, um, with these blood thinning tablets, uh, so I'm going to cut them out. So I cut them out. I knew I had a big problem. Oh. On Saturday, it continued. The blood was still just flowing. On Sunday morning, at about four o'clock, I'd, I'd gone to, to go and relieve myself again, and I knew I was in trouble. And I didn't have the faith to believe God straight away for my healing. So what I did on Sunday morning at about four o'clock, I laid my hands on me. And Lord, your word said, if I lay hands upon the sick and pray for them, they will recover. So Lord, I'm laying my hand on myself. Lord, because I've got nobody around yet to lay hands on me. So I'm laying a hand on myself, Lord, and I believe in you for, for healing. But... I never had enough faith within me to reach up and touch the hem of his garment. I just did not have the faith to do that. And Sunday morning. After that, on, on, at about six o'clock, I said, Lord, I need help now. And the Lord said to me, Call for the elders of the church on Sunday morning. Let them anoint you with oil and pray over you, and, and you will be healed. So on Sunday morning, I came here, and I got permission from Pastor Justin to, to communicate with you folks. And the elders all came forward, and they laid hands on me. And by, the, man, by Sunday the flow had stopped, but not completely, but it was just about completely stopped. On, then my daughter came and said, Dad, I've made an appointment with you with a doctor on Wednesday. And I went to the doctor on Wednesday and I explained to uh, what um, had taken place and how long. And she said to me, Dave, I want to tell you if you had not stopped taking those blood thinning tablets, by Sunday you would have bled out completely. Sure. And that was quite a, 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 a fright to me, but I, I should just, just go back a little bit. I know I'm a bit stuttering and stammering here, but when God said for me to call for the elders of the church, God said to me, they will lift up your hands to be able to touch the hem of Jesus' garment that you can be healed. Now, by the grace of God, I am completely healed. There's no more Amen. blood in my urine or anything. Because I dared to trust the word of God and to call for the elders. And I want to say to all the elders here, thank you for lifting my hands to be able to touch the hem of the Garment Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Woo, man. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Thank Amen. You. Wow. God is at work. Amen. Wow. Isn't it amazing? 
we've been trusting God for healing. And so every testimony that we hear about healing, we make opportunity for it to come forward for the simple reason. It's when we hear these testimonies, our faith is stirred, and we really begin to believe that these things can happen. Take God at his word. So last week, if, we, if the elders laid hands on you and you're still trusting God for healing, please keep trusting God. God will do it for you. And if you have been healed, testify, because it's important for us to give God all the glory. That's what it's all about. Coming back to say, Lord, receive all your glory. That's what it's all about. And so we want to encourage you, let's keep contending for healing. Let's keep contending for healthy bodies. There are many that we are still praying for in the body that are not feeling well, it, but we contend for their healing. Amen. Amen. All right. Great. So just before we conclude our family time, I'd like to uh, ask the Camerons to come forward. Um, we've got an announcement that we want to make. And <laughs> stay next to you wife. All right, so as you know, uh, Niall and Tess has been serving with us for a while now on the eldership team, and uh, they're not leaving the church, but they are, their lives have changed. Their season has changed a little bit. They are, as you know, you know, in between this Ndlambe and Port Elizabeth, they, the season has changed. Their son is now in PE, and they just kind of felt like with all their hearts, they want to serve this community. They want to be elders available for you. But because of the change in their, in their lives, they are not able to fully do that. They are doing it. They have been doing it even it, while they were traveling up and about. But now they, they've just asked that we would um, release them from, from this commitment to serve. And I want to say, the Bible says that elders who rule well are worthy of double honor. That's what, that's what the Bible says, especially those that are given to preaching of the word. And Tess has been ministering in word to us many times. And um, they have just been a real blessing to us on eldership. Ready and I have been blessed to uh, have them help us shoulder the, the weight of, of, of the ark, uh, the weight of, you know, of ministry, as it were. And we know we can still count on them because they're not leaving the church. They are in between churches. They, when they are in PE, they are with Harvest, which is our sister church in PE. When they are here, they are with us. But they are unfortunately not able to serve us the way they have in the past. And so, yeah, we're going to be releasing them from eldership. And we want to pray a blessing over them. But I'm going to allow them to share a little bit of heart if they want to, uh, whatever they want to say to, to, to us as a family. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, I'd just like to say real quick, it's been a, such a nice team to work with. We've, uh, we've laughed a lot together and prayed a lot and spread the vision, and um, it's an honor to be with you guys. And uh, we just love you and appreciate you. Love you too, guys. So, to, um, I'm just weighing up now. It's not time to preach, but I'm going to say something because I'm speaking to me, <laughs> us, and also to the church. So this year in the Hebrew calendar is what? Five, seven, eight, five. And eight and five represent shout or voice for eight and five grace. So shouts of grace. And, um, and if you look in Zechariah, the, the capstone of the temple that God is building us um, is capped by a seven-faceted capstone, the seven spirits of God, and, and shouts of grace, grace, go to this capstone. So wherever we are this year, whether it's serving here, whether it's serving in PE, blessings on this church, blessings on all the churches that God is working in, He is shouting grace, grace, as He finishes off in the next few years, I don't know, he knows how many, the work of the church, this church that he's building. So as much as, as, much as my heart goes, mm, you know, there's another side of me that's saying, God's got this. He is shouting grace, grace to all the churches that he is building. Amen. So church, um, we just want to bless them. Like I said, they're still a part of the church. You're going to see them. It's not like we're praying them out of the church. You're going to see them whenever they are here. They're going to be with us when they are in Port Elizabeth. They are there. 
and they are still a part of this family. But we want to bless them just for their service. Uh, they have, you know, uh, we call him Irish. He brings all the humor to our team. But uh, it's just been amazing having them serve with us. And we want to release a blessing. So if you would stretch your hands and let's just bless them. Heavenly Father, we thank you for, thank you for coming up. <laughs> we thank you for Nile and Tess. We thank you for their willingness and their availability. They are always willing. They have a strong yes towards the things of the kingdom. And Lord, whenever they hear your voice, they want to obey. We thank you for the wisdom that you've given them. We thank you for the love for the church. We thank you, O oh God, for the passion that they have for you and for your people. We pray that you'll continue to use them wherever they find themselves, whether they are visiting here, moving there, wherever they find themselves. Lord, may you just continue to use them to advance your kingdom. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus that even though they step of eldership, they will continue to serve you with the same passion and commitment. We pray a rich blessing upon them. Uh, we even speak the same shouts of grace over them. Grace, grace upon you. We know this is a new season for you. There are many things that you're figuring out. There are things that you're having to deal with. But even in that, shouts of grace, 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 grace. Not by might, not by power, but by his spirit will it be done for you and for your family. We pray that this will be a rich time for your family. We pray that um, the whole family, just included, will be really blessed by this decision that they have made to focus on you and focus on family. So we give you honor, we give you praise, and we pray rich blessing upon this couple, upon this family. In Jesus' name, amen. Just Amen. Word over them. <laughs> I'm doing this, I've not done this publicly. I'm going to do it now. You are stepping out to step in <laughs> into a wave and into a current so deep and so fierce. You are scattering the pearls of the kingdom everywhere <laughs> you're going, the Lord says. Wherever the soles of your feet should tread, that ground you will claim for the kingdom. Father says, I've put weapons in your hands. They are swords that will come out of your mouths. You will declare and you will decree the government of my kingdom. You are stepping in to step out into a wave that is so deep. You'll be taken by the current of my love and my grace to proclaim the good and the perfect year, the acceptable year of the king. You are stepping in to step out. They will see the anointing of my son upon your heads. So we say thank you for being part of this house, for every stone that you laid in the trenches. Thank you for every life you washed, for every word that you gave to set free. Thank you for your obedience and thank you for your love. May you go forth in power and might as the Lord has decreed. We say thank you and double honor to you both. Amen. Amen. So, yeah, we're glad we still have you in our lives to do life with. Uh, said that things are sh shifting, but we rejoice. I want to ask you to continue to pray. And the Bible says, uh, he who desires to be an elder desires a great thing. Yeah. So we will be trusting God to have others come up. Starts with a desire. You know the requirements of eldership as I mentioned in the scriptures. Uh, if, you, if you meet those Start praying, and if you desire it, we never know what God is going to do in the next season. So let's begin to trust God. Um, amen. amen. All right. Uh, the altar is open for your offering. Whatever you have prepared to give, let's give with cheerful hearts. Uh, God loves a cheerful giver. God bless you as you give.
we feel a heavy like presence of praise today and we just want to release that praise today um, we want to tell God how good he is how beautiful he is how marvelous he is how wonderful he's been in our lives so every chance you get to, through um, worship and praise today we just need you to go ahead you can even change lyrics and give your own lyrics it's fine because we're here to praise God we're here to exalt him, to worship you, God, to honor you, to praise you, to lift up your holy name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let your praise
to be shaken. Our hope and our faith is in you and you alone. We will not be shaken. Our trust is in you. We will trust in no other. Awesome. It's good to be in his presence. Whew. Great things happen in his presence. Father, we thank you for every giver. We thank you, O oh God, that freely we have received and freely we give. It is our joy to give to you because all that we have belongs to you. Bless every hand that is given. Bless every house here represented. May your blessing overflow upon us as a people. May we lack nothing good in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. Whew. I don't know about you, but I feel the presence of God in this place. I want to go right into the word of God. Last week we introduced a, a new series that I entitled On the Go. On the Go. And basically we said this series is... is aimed at challenging you to go. That's what it's all about. I tried last week to show you that our relationship with Jesus, our relationship with God, was never meant to be stagnant. Our relationship with God was never meant to be static. It was supposed to be on the go. From Abraham all the way, we see God calling people to be on a journey. The Bible depicts uh, our relationship with Jesus as a walk, it's, it's always a journey. There is a pathway to somewhere. God is taking you places. Can you say amen? amen? He is taking you places. He wants you to go places with him. Amen. And so we have, to, we have to then begin to ask ourselves, where are we going? Where is your relationship with Jesus taking you? So that's personal, but also outwardly, you must be going into the world. We looked at the Great Commission because at the heart of this series is a challenge for us to fulfill our mission, our vision, which is to draw people closer to Jesus. But, but more than a word of truth mission, this, there is a commission that Jesus Christ gave. And at the heart of the Great Commission is this apostolic command to go. You have been commanded to go. And so, as I was preparing for this, I felt the Lord say to me, whether you like it or not, you are called to go. Whether you want to believe me or not, if you are a born-again believer, you are called to go. This is not for pastors, this is not for evangelists, this is not for elders, for leaders, a specific group of people. This is for all those who have chosen to follow Jesus. If you have decided to follow Jesus, if you call yourself a follower of Jesus, a Christian, a born again believer, you have a mission to go. You have to go into the world and make disciples. Which means if you are not actively moving forward, if you are not going, you are either running away from your, from your calling like Jonah. Jonah was given an assignment and he chose to run away from God. And I'm going to be talking about Jonah next week because Jonah understood that there was an assignment. And when I was reading this story, I realized that the Bible actually says Jonah chose to run from the presence of God. And that's, that's next week's message. But here is what the Lord said to me very clearly. If you are not going, you are running away from his presence. He said, I will be with you on the go. So if you are not running away from your calling, maybe like what I want to talk about today, you are willf wi willingly or willfully disobeying Jesus. If you are not going, you are choosing to 
disobey the command of Jesus. And Jesus is our commanding officer. Now, now I want to just pause a little bit because God gave me a weird thought as I was preparing this. He, 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 he highlighted to me the consequences of disobeying a commanding officer in the military. For those who have been in the military, you know the story. If a, a, a superior officer gives you a command and you dis regard it or whatever your excuse is you disobey it it's a serious offense and depending on the nature of the command the consequences of dis, uh, disobeying your commanding officers they vary uh, they, they, it could be you know just go for detention do whatever punishment they give you they could put you in prison for five years they could uh, uh, suspend all your benefits, but ultimately you could be discharged. They call it uh, dis, uh, dishonorably discharged. And I want to talk about being dishonorably discharged for a moment because the Lord said to me, there are some who call themselves Christians who are at the end going to be dishonorably discharged because they disobeyed their commanding officer. Your commanding officer, now, 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 let me tell you, before they dishonorably discharge you, they have to first verify that you knew that whoever gave you the command was a superior officer and they made that clear, but you still chose to, disagree, to, to disobey them. And I felt like the Lord, before he gave the great commission, first had to show us that he is the highest ranking officer in heaven and on earth. Before he discharged, before he gave us the commission, he said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. So what I'm about to command you, I am, I, I number one, outrank you. Not only do I outrank you, I am the highest commanding officer in heaven and on earth. And now I'm about to give you a commission, a direct command to do something for the kingdom to which you subscribe. Amen. He said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me, therefore go. If you are not going, you are disobeying the highest ranking officer in God's kingdom. And as a result, the Lord said there are many that will be dishonorably discharged. And I said, God, show me through the scriptures because my people are going to look at me like how you are looking at me right now. Like, 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 uh, Pastor Justin, I, I, I thought I was safe. But, but listen to this. He says in Matthew chapter number 25, I want to talk a little bit about the cost of not going. In Matthew chapter number 25, he makes it clear that if you are ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of you. And he says in verse 31, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne and all the nations will gather before him and he will separate the, the, uh, the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left hand. When he comes, he's going to call all of us and he's going to say, let's decide which side are you going to fall, whether to the left or to the right. Then he will say, verse 41, I've just skipped a number of verses talking about those to the right because I want to focus on those on the left. He says to those on his left, depart from me, dishonorably discharged. You will say, depart from me, you who are cursed into eternal fire. Into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you did not give me anything to drink. I was a stranger, 
you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. Depart from me because you never obeyed my command. And they will ask, where did we see you hungry and not feed you? Like when I told you to go to that hungry person and you thought, he's not talking to me, he's talking to Pastor Justin. When I say that the mission was you going and you refused. You, you thought it was just your neighbor not feeling well until the Lord said, go to your neighbor. Because the moment the Lord commands you, he's now saying your obedience has got nothing to do with the neighbor but with the command that I've given you. And many of us are taking this lightly. When he says go, we're like, oh, well, I don't feel like it. If you are in the army, you will be dishonorably discharged. How many of us are waiting for the day that I feel like going? You know, when I feel like it. You don't have to feel like it. You have to obey the command. The Great Commission is not optional. It's not a great suggestion. It's a commandment, people. You have to go. You see, some people got it. They, they, they listen to the message and they're like, I haven't gone in a long while. Let me just go somewhere. And some of you are like, well, Pastor Justin is doing another series. He's always up to series and, 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 and you're not doing anything. You are disobeying the command of the Lord. Go. Go. Those who were in life group were asking you, where are you going? Challenging one another to go. Did you go is the question. Because the church, the problem with the church is we are happy to talk about going, but not go. We are happy to sit here and say amen to a message like we need to go, but no one goes. How many of you after last week's message just felt like I need to go? Like, oh, well, that was good information. No, it wasn't information. That was a command from the Lord. Go. Put Alfred is thirsty. Put Alfred is naked. Put Alfred is hungry. Put Alfred is in need of a savior. And he's commissioned you and I to go. And so I want to talk for a few moments on the subject, the cost of not going. Because you think, you think it's just, uh, it's just like, well, Pastor Justin is getting excited for nothing. But there is a cost. If you don't go, people die. You see, in the army, if you are given a direct command in a time of war, <laughs> and you disobey, serious consequences. If you're given a direct command and people die because you did not obey, serious consequences. We have been given the command to go. Because Jesus knows that if you don't go, people are going to hell. They are going to eternal fire if you don't go. And so he's, com he's commissioning you, he's commissioning me to go. Because lives are at stake. And if you don't go, I know you Christians love heaven so much. Amen? If you don't go, maybe even heaven is at stake. Ha, I got your attention now. Like, hey, just for me and Jesus, you know, I love Jesus as long as I'm going to heaven. And he's like, hey, don't, don't be so sure because you're going to come and say, Lord, Lord. And I'll say, depart from me. I commissioned you to go. I commissioned you to save people that I love, people that I died for. And he didn't even move you. You didn't even try. Depart from me. 
You see, the thing is not getting them saved. The thing is going. He alone saves people. But you need to go. The thing is not healing people. He alone is the healer. But you need to go. He just says, I need you to go because unless you go, all these things will not follow. Going is what unlocks the supernatural power of God. It's what unlocks what God wants to do. Let's look at the cost of not going from the story of Esther. And I'm going to be to the point because I just feel like this story is so powerful. And it expresses what I'm trying to say to you. So Hathak, I think, what verse am I on? Verse 9. Hathak went back and reported to Esther what Mordecai had said. Then she instructed him to, to say to Mordecai, All the king's officials and the people of the royal provinces know that for any man or woman who approaches the king in the inner court without being summoned, the king has only but one law, that they be put to death unless the king extends the golden scepter to them and spares their lives. But 30 days have passed since I, have, since I was called to go to the king. When Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back this answer. Do not think that because you are part of word of truth, do not think that because you are saved and are going to heaven, do, do, do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. It's so easy to say, well, I made the cut. Well, I, I am already on the train to heaven. Do not think that because you are already part of the kingdom, you'll be safe. Watch this. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. Like, don't think it's just another series. Could it be? Like, oh, well, if I don't go, Pastor Justin will go. Yes, yeah, so there, there are times when God sends another, but there are times when he does not. I know, I know we, we love to, 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 to say, well, God will always make a plan. But yeah, let me tell you, ask Jonah. If you are the plan, God will mess up your life so that you'll fulfill the plan. There's no one else that is going to deliver these people but you. And I felt, and I'm going into next week's message already, I felt there, some of you, your life is being messed up because you are way off the mission. Amen. Let, let that sink in. You've been praying hard. Why, why are things not working? You are way off the mission. It's God's grace. Why am I wanting to preach next week's message? I should have preached it this week. It's God's grace that you're going through the rough waters. It's God's grace that the whale wants to swallow you. <laughs> okay, come next week. This week you're not ready for this. I can see you, you, you're not ready for this. God will send somebody else. If you are it, God will make sure that you go. But... Let's come back to Esther. Mordecai says, if you don't, go. I know it's risky. I know this could even result in your death. But if you don't go, don't think you're safe. Like, uh, Pastor Justin, you know, I I'm afraid of people. I don't know. But, but if you don't go, could it be that you came into the kingdom for such a time as this? Could it be that God saved you so that your neighbor could be saved? Could it be that God saved you so that at a time like this, I, I, I had this challenge, and I don't know why God is doing this to me, but I had this personal challenge. He said to me, what if this is your last year in Port Alfred? 
and don't listen to what I'm not saying. When I, when I say that, uh, there are some people that are just like, oh, are you prophesying? I'm not prophesying, but that's what the Lord said to me. What if this is your last year in Port Alfred? Uh, have you done what I asked you to do? Or oh, you're going to just go to the next town or to the next place or to wherever the Lord wants you to be, and you're going to be like, um, yeah, I was 20 years. Next year, it's 20 years in Port Alfred. Can you believe it? 20 years in Port Alfred, but were you on the mission? Have you done what I called you to do? Imagine if God came to you and he said, you only have the rest of this year. Not only in Port Alfred, but on earth. What, what will you do with your life? How serious would you take the instructions of the Lord? Like, like, I know you think I will do it next year, but I'm, I'm not prophesying, but some of you, it could be the last year you've got. And when you stand before him, you can't say, well, you know, have you done what I asked you to do? You, you jumped on a bus, Justin, and you left Zimbabwe, you left your father's house on a mission. Have you lived the mission out? So, Mordecai says to Esther, if you remain silent, if you choose not to go, relief and deliverance maybe will come from another place. But as for you and your father's house, you will perish. And who knows, but that you have come into the royal position for such a time. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai, go. Gather all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three, three days and nights. Um, and I will, sorry, and uh, I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go. Everybody say, I will go. If you knew that this is the reason that God brought you to put out for it, so that somebody could be saved. Will you still sit back and just say, well, you know, will you go? Esther, when, when Esther realized what was at stake, that lies were at stake, that even her own royal position was at stake, suddenly she said, I will go. I'm hoping that this morning somebody would realize that there are grave consequences to disobeying the Great Commission. It's a commission. That's the reason why the church exists. We are happy to do all this stuff, which is great. Have the good program, have a good worship. But I told you the church, if it's not going, it's not living its mission. Jesus didn't say go gather in a building, have fancy stage, sta stages and, and have a pastor preach to you week in, week out. He says go, go, go. And I say it as a church, I'm proud of many things that we have done well in this church. But I'm always challenged when I think of this uh, I don't know why God gave it to us, but could it be? He knows that unless we go, Port Alfred will perish. And it, it, it has evolved over the years, but it still remains. Even when we have prayed and said, God, give us a new vision. It's like, I'm still going to leave reaching the lost is part of that vision. I'm like, God, give us something else. Of course, we excel in worship. Of course, we excel in teaching. Come on, ask me to write resources and do all this kind of stuff. That's easy up my alley. He's like, no, go. And I felt this time around, God is saying to us as a church, unless we go. People perish. Unless we go, we risk the consequences of disobeying a superior commander. And I don't know what that would look like. I'm, I'm not threatening your, your salvation. You are saved. Please, I don't know what that would look like. But all I know is that there are grave consequences to disobeying the command of the Lord. And if there is one 
mission we need to be taking serious as a church is the going mission. Like I'm going. Don't think of going overseas. Don't think of crossing the borders like I do. Just say I'm going. I'm, 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 I'm going out there. And I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to tell somebody about Jesus. I'm going to feed somebody. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give somebody water to drink. I'm, I'm just going to be Jesus' hands and feet. I'm going. And I feel like this season, God is expecting us as word of truth. Not some. Like, and, and if, if I just wanted, I'm, I'm going to speak as your pastor. If I, didn't, if I just wanted this to sink in, 150, 160 people in the service, how many went? Less than 10%. How many even thought of going? I'm not going to ask. How many just said, ah, that was a good message? And if we keep having this kind of attitude towards a great commission, our neighbors will not be saved. Imagine your best friend one day, as they stand before the judgment seat, they look at you, they're like, you never told me. Like, I did life with you. I played tennis with you. I went fishing with you. We even boogied Whatever that means. Amen. We did stuff together. But you did not tell me. Your best friend could go to hell because you thought deliverance would come from someone else. Isn't it how we justify it? Well, somebody else must tell them. What if there is no one else? And so this morning, at the risk of repeating myself like a broken record, I just want this to sink in. People perish when we don't obey the Great Commission. And people could be somebody with a name, somebody you know. Because you know when we say people, it's like, oh, who are those people? It could be somebody you're doing life with every single day. It could be somebody that you're walking past every single day. And when the Lord says go, he's not saying I will give you a special feeling to go. It's just like be on, be on mission. If I send you, be on mission. Be willing to go. Step out and go. So uh, I love this. Mordecai gives... Esther, a sobering word, if you remain silent. And I felt this morning, this is my message. If you remain silent, if you refuse to go, there is a lot at stake. Not only for the unsaved, not only for the lost, but for you as a believer. I don't know what that will be, but one day you will realize that there is Something that you lost by not going. You know, last, last week after, after the service, I got to see Charlie after the service. We had the same function. And, and he's, he got to me. That's when I told him, you're going to testify. And he came in. He said, like, oh, yeah. I just, when I walked out of the church, I just knew I have to go. And I'm like, how many, how many felt like that? Just like after the service, I knew I have to go. Do you know now that you have to go? Because you, you have to go. Jesus, the highest commanding officer. This is not Pastor Justin commissioning you. I'm just repeating what Jesus said. This is our mission. It's your mission. It's my mission. It's our mission. To go and to make disciples. Going requires a certain level of sacrifice. Esther puts this into context, like, you know, if I go, I could die. And what this means in our context is that, you know, the reason why most of us are not going, it's self-preservation. Maybe you want to preserve your reputation. Uh, I, I don't know what it is you're trying to preserve. 
your own life, your own whatever. I, I don't want people to think that I'm a crazy person. I was speaking to somebody about going, and they're like, oh, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't want to be like those Jehovah's Witnesses. And I'm like, at least they are going. Uh, he, he, they should be saying that of us. We are on a mission. If we believe that we have the real truth, why are we not going? Oh, we're quick to judge those who are doing something. However, their belief system, they, they are at least believing it enough to go. And I looked at the person and I'm like, when last did you go? You can laugh at them. They will come whether it's raining or not raining. Even if you tell them no 20 times, they will come on your gate next week. And they are coming again because they understand the importance of going. Come on, church. If we have a better truth, if we have the more excellent way, why are we not going? It's going to be a sacrifice. Something has to die. Jesus said, unless a grain of seed falls to the ground and dies. I don't know what needs to die in your life. It's pride. Let it die. Self-preservation. Let it die. Just, just let it die and say, I'm going to go. Yes, they might confuse me with whoever else, but I'm going because I am on a mission. He left me here on the earth to save the lost. And I'm going to, I'm at least going to go. Like, oh, what if they reject me? That's not your business. Your business is going. If you want motivation, not, all of you loved when I talked about the Jehovah's Witness, and, and, I'm, and I'm not pulling anything down about this, but what, why do you laugh? Because you know that how, no matter how many times you say no to them, they still come. Because they're on a mission. We will go. And you're like, well, I went last week, and they, 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 they rejected me, so, you know, I'm done. I, went, I once went 20 years ago on a mission, and somebody said this, so I, I can't go... Like what? Let them reject you a hundred times over, but still go. Because Jesus said it, if they reject you, they're rejecting me, not you. Just be on a mission. So whatever you need to sacrifice, go. Lastly, going requires courage. This is what I want to say to you. It's not Courage is not the absence of fear. You all know that. So yes, it's scary. It's, it's unknown. You don't know what's going to happen. You, you, you don't know whether they're going to say yes, no. You don't even know. Don't, don't even try and figure it out. And I know it's scary to step into the unknown. But it requires courage. Esther had to be courageous. It's not like after Mordecai preached... Uh, preach to Esther all of a sudden she's like woo now here we go I'm, I'm on fire she still was <laughs> afraid but she went nevertheless so I know you're still afraid you're like oh Pastor Jay it doesn't help that you're telling us now there's a lot at stake and na 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 I, I, I don't mean to, to say by saying all these things now it's less scary it's, it's as scary as it has always been and it will always be that scary but now you need the courage. So she said, let's fast, let's pray. If you need to fast and pray, fast and pray. But don't fast and pray and never go. That's a church. We will we'll say, okay, it's time for us to evangelize. Let's call a fasting and prayer. We pray 30 days, 40 nights. After that, let's go. Let's pray again. I think the Holy Spirit has not yet confirmed. Let's pray again. Until Jesus comes, we are still in the prayer meeting. We're not going. So she says, guys... I want you to pray just for three days and three nights. I will also be praying. But after that, we go. And here's the interesting part. We are not told about God responding to their prayers. They don't even know whether God heard them or not. They just did their part. Well, we have a mission. We have to go. 
And so let's fast, let's pray. Three days are over. God says nothing. The account doesn't tell us of God saying, well, I honor your fast and your prayer. I'm going to preserve your life. Now go. No, they don't know. They just prayed and fasted. And they finished like, okay, we're done. And here comes Esther with fear and trembling. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going. This could mean the end of my life. I know the laws, but I'm going. This could mean being the talk of the company for the rest of the year, but I'm going. This could be the, mean that I'm the laughing stock of my friends. They might even mock me and say, oh, you believe in that kind of stuff? But I'm going. And with fear and trembling, she went. And here's the good news. Salvation came for the Jews. And here's the good news for us. If you go, people will be saved. Full stop. Jesus is not just sending us on a, like, oh, I just want to see if you love me enough. No, he's like, here's the mission. People must be saved. Last week I spoke about Jesus himself coming. And now at the end of this series, I'm going to talk about it. Jesus said, when the father said, who will go? Jesus said, I will go. Like, do you know you're going to have to pass through the cross? Whatever it takes, I will go. Because if I go, people will be saved. And I want to say to you, if you go, people will be saved. That's, that's the end result. That's why he has commissioned you to go. People will be saved. Oh, but I've never seen that keep going. People will be saved. The reason why you and I are here is because somebody obeyed the commission. You didn't fall from heaven with all the revelation about Jesus' love and just like, oh, now I'm going back to heaven. You were not born with this. No one is born saved. Somebody had to share the gospel with you and you had to believe. If you're a believer, somebody went. How can they be saved unless they hear? How will they hear unless we go? Come on, church. This is my cry because God is challenging me as much as he's challenging you. You and I must go. We must go. We must go. Amen. Uh, I was just caught off guard when Justin asked me this morning. But the Spirit of God has shown me something I need to ask you people today. I want you to be truthful, not only before God, but with yourself this morning. How many of you sitting there expected me to tell you that that guy that I went to pray for was healed? You see, like me, I also, in a way, was disappointed that he didn't tell me that his back was healed. Because I thought I was obedient, and I went. But somehow it just didn't work. How many of us are put off because we are scared what the result is going to be of us going to somebody and telling them about Jesus? You see, I thought about it, and I realized when I walked away there that the body will decay, but the spirit lasts forever. The part of him that I believe is being healed, if not healed already, is his spiritual side. Him, his daughter that's not well, his wife that had cancer. One of those three, or maybe all three. But it's the long-lasting thing. Healing of the spirit is more important than the body. And that thing of failure that stops us from getting off our blessed assurance and going out here and speaking to somebody that needs Jesus. We've got it. Each and every one of us have got it in us. And you know the reason why I keep on going back? 
Isaiah 55, 11 says, His word will never return void. That's what you set out. God has put in your heart. He will touch that person. Even if it's the fact that you care for them. Caring. You know how many people are waiting for you just to tell, tell them that Jesus loves them. That's healing. That's obedience. Thank you, Father. Simple, practical challenge. Go. Stand with me. It's time to go. And I heard a voice in the heaven saying, Who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. But Alfred needs salvation. Who will go for us? Here I am. Send me. A colleague needs needs a touch from God. Who will go? Here I am. Send me. That's the only correct response. Anything else is direct and willful disobedience. Is it going to be easy? No. But go anyway. Because he promised, as if he knew it was going to be hard, he said, hey, I will be with you. I will be with you every step of the way. I will be with you. Maybe you are right now contemplating where you kind of felt like the Lord wanted you to go and you're like, Woo, how can I do it? I hear the Lord saying, hey, I will be right there with you. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this sobering thought. Thank you for allowing us to be part of this transformative gospel. Lord, forgive us where we have taken the Great Commission for granted. Where we have justified our not going. Your word has spoken to us clearly this morning. Help us to step out in simple obedience and go. I pray that this church would be a going church. That we will be people that live our lives on this mission to save the lost. May every little thing that we do draw people closer to you, Jesus. Help us to go. In Jesus' name, amen. Sobering message. Challenge me to the core. I hope it has challenged you as a member of this church. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious towards you. May he lift up his countenance upon you. And may he give you peace all the days of your life. And all God's people say it. Amen. God bless you. Have a powerful week. Amen.